The New Jersey Bank Marketing Association presents its October 2011 Bank Marketing Seminar. This program was recorded October 6th, 2011 in Clark, New Jersey. I'm your host, Steve Lubetkin. In this program, a presentation by Michael Hoffman, president of Client X Client. Introducing Michael is Darren Cafano of Columbia Bank. All right, our last speaker for uh, this morning is Michael Hoffman. He is a leading authority on customer experience. Hoffman's book, Customer Worthy, Why, and How Everyone in Your Organization Must Think Like a Customer, has become a manual for, company, a manual for companies seeking to understand and monetize their customers' experience for competitive advantage. The C by C matrix presented in Customer Worthy is the industry standard for depicting, monetizing, and managing a company's customer experiences. His experience working with Fortune 500 companies in diverse industries from retail, communications, travel, nonprofits, publishing, utilities, media, and financial services, including over 300 banks, credit unions, insurance, and asset management companies, has made him a sought after speaker at national conferences on marketing, sales, customer service, and the future of customer technologies and customer experience. In 2004, Hoffman launched Client uh, X Client, a co consulting firm specializing in customer stra experience strategy, measurement, and technologies. C by C helps companies develop best practices solutions in multi-channel sales, marketing, and customer service, customer intelligence systems, CRM, and social networks all centered on customer experience and enabling businesses and management to excel by thinking like a customer. Michael? Great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wow, see, this is much, much better than a webinar. Okay, where we've gone so digital, it's like it's nice having people that you can speak to and they actually see you. So feel free to interact as we uh, go through this. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question that uh, just to get started, because and this is what I'm seeing every day, by the way, and I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, how many of you uh, are banking customers? Raise your hand. Okay, how are you feeling right now? Okay, how are you feeling as a banking customer or as a customer in the financial market? This is what I'm passing every day, which is Occupy Wall Street. And I remember going a long, long time ago when I was in bank marketing, which one did I want to be in at which time? You know, because you would tell people you're in marketing, and they're like, oh, you know, and I worked for DoubleClick for a while, and I was in the, uh, and I worked for uh, MetroMail. So marketing meant junk mail, you're the, you're the guys that send us all that stuff. You're the people that are calling me in the middle of the night. Now you're the people that are sending me all this spam. So you have that side, so then you want to be in banking. Okay, so now you're in banking, and there's thousands of protesters that I'm passing every day talking about how evil bankers are. Okay, so we're talking about the messages that we're getting, and we're talking about allies commercials. Those are all hitting a certain market, but this is what's popping up on the news. And if you're going through Manhattan, you're seeing this all over. And now this is in 147 cities across the country. And regardless of what they're about and what they're protesting, there's always a bank sign in how bad banks are. Now, I'm not going to talk about this, but what I'm really talking about is, look at the messages. Okay? Somebody's creating those billboards. And you talk about digital spend, like Ally Bank just mentioned. That's creating messages that are portable that can be in other places. And it used to be really expensive to create a message and get a message out there. What you don't see here is in the morning, this is the most high-tech group you've ever seen. Okay? I don't know if any of you have seen kind of the background, but they all have their PCs out, they all have their Macs out, they're all videotaping and going up on YouTube. That's why it's so big. It's not expensive to get the message out. The question is, from an innovation standpoint, why aren't banks sending out messages? Or, with more power, why aren't your customers sending out your messages for you? So that's what I'm going to talk about. I think it's a, a tremendous underperforming asset. And I'm going to focus on thinking like a customer. Again, think about if you're a financial customer, and you can think of about what, by lifestyle, everybody has mentioned segmentation today. If I'm a senior citizen, I'm, I've, I've got these life events happening, how am I thinking? Okay, if I've got kids that are going into college, how am I thinking? And again, that's where the best messages come from. The most effective messages is getting into the person's persona and what is their need set. How do they react right now? Okay, this is common sense, but we haven't taken advantage of this and taking advantage of being able to leverage the customer experience, the intimate relationship we have with our customers. 
And the banking relationship is probably the most intimate relationship. Because customers give you money, and they really don't expect anything back, except their money. Interest would be nice, but that's almost, you know, kind of going to the side a little bit. Just don't kill me with fees. At least give me back what I started with. And make my money accessible. And answer the phone when I call. Okay? Those are all the easy pieces that we have now. Okay? But how do we get people emotional about that? How can we leverage our creative background? So this is a little bit of what, when I started uh, client by client, what I was looking at was all of these interactions we have with customers from you know, insert statements and the message you would have on the, uh, uh, on the outside of the envelope, on the inside of the envelope. What is a call script when somebody calls a call center? When somebody meets somebody in the branch, what do they say? Those can all be programmed objectives and messages, and they need to be consistent, and they need to be easy to access, easy to tell, and easy to retell. So spend your creative time thinking about that. My experience when I talked about all the companies and all the industries I've worked with before, it's what they all have in common is they all have customers. So what I, I typically do is I go in and I look across the, uh, the customer experience and look at all the interactions that somebody has, and that's why I wrote uh, Customer Worthy was after this experience, I saw that there was really a common methodology that I could come together with and, you know, to an extent, automate that. Okay? I want to automate as much as possible those regular contacts I have so I can spend my time on the more innovative ones. So if I'm spending all my time building, you know, where I used to spend all my time putting together one big ad campaign that would run in three months, I don't have there's so many messages that are going on a daily basis that we really need to start thinking about filling that void. Otherwise, Occupy, Wall Street, and other groups, they're filling those messages for your customers. They're getting in between you and your customers. That's a great picture of me. I just thought I'd throw that up there. Uh, but the future of innovation, and, and it's interesting because the uh, Bank Market Association conference is coming up, and I was looking to speak at that, and they were talking about innovation, and there's such a lack of innovation in banking. And when you look at the tools you have, you know, how am I going to be innovative with rate? How am I going to be innovative with fees? Well, Bank of America just helped you become a little bit more innovative by not having, you know, a $5 fee. Citigroup, I don't know if you saw that, but I'm on an elevator yesterday in Manhattan. So they're going to charge uh, customers $20 a month, you know, which is a little flash kind of message. Again, a little message popping. If I'm a Citibank customer, they're actually a client. Uh, I get a little frustrated with that. Now, if you know, if you're really an intense database marketer, that you can do that and you can punish your customers that don't move, which is probably 80% of your customers. The point that Al I made, if I've got your, uh, your pay by phone or if I've got your bill pay, you're not leaving. So what I've done in my background in the database marketing side, I can calculate and project how many people are going to leave. Not only how many people, but I can actually predict by customer how many are going to leave. And those ones that I want to keep, I send a different message to them. It can be very surgical. So that's what I do in the book, and that's what I speak to. But today, I really want to speak about this, because your customers, these, all these people here, they all have bank accounts. A lot of these people, you can't see it, but to the left a little bit is the Millennium Hotel. So for the 400 people that are sleeping in the park that's right here, there's about another 150 people rumored to be sleeping at the Millennium. Okay? There's another group down the street that are staying at the W Hotel. Okay? There's dry cleaning bags that are out here. So these people all have sponsors, but they're influencing your customers. And why? Because they're putting a message out there, and they're leveraging the media. So this is actually the road that I go down every day to go to my office right now. I'm working with a software company. It's around the corner. But I'm walking with the police. And depending on what time I go, this is what it looks like. And this is what's on national news. And it's not on National news, frankly, because it's such a huge story and it's changing people's lives, it's content. They are making it so easy to give a message out and prepackage a message, you would not believe the number of cameras and news media outlets that are there because they're prepackaging the story. They have scripts that they're using. They have a marketing meeting on the steps. I don't know if you can see it from here. It's actually across the street from here. Every morning, where the guy is dictating what our message is going to be, what our word blurbs are going to be. Do you do that with your branches? At a local area, do you send out a press release by branch, because it'll make it extremely searchable, for what your rates are every month, or every week, or every day? And make sure that you put the branch's address on there tied to the rates, because it'll make it more searchable the way that Google search, searches local now. 
Okay? It doesn't cost anything to do that press release. It doesn't cost anything to create those messages. Create it in a way that it becomes viral. I know we said that before that there may not be that many seniors using uh, digital media, but they're definitely on Facebook. My mother-in-law is Miss Facebook. My wife is like, I don't know how she does it. Okay? I, I don't know how technically sophisticated she is, but she doesn't use email. She uses Facebook. Now, you should not go and put your message on that, uh, w on that, uh, on that wall because that's really violating the whole idea of community and everything. But why not give somebody like my mother-in-law a happy message about what just happened to my bank? And then let that become viral. Package that information, leverage every one of those opportunities, get the maximum value out of it. Okay? Because what happens is there's a long tail of every message that goes out there. This is a little uh, sentiment analysis that you can get for free. You could actually go and do this on your, uh, on your bank or on any brand. And you can go and see, you know, laugh out loud, win, oh my god, cute, or whatever, our kind of sentiment ratings about what's going on with uh, Occupy Wall Street. Stats, 62,436 visits. Okay? When you think about ad impact, this was all free, kind of. Okay? They didn't pay to get those messages out there. This is the media picking up what's going on out there. And we talk about what's impacting your customers. I, I just typed in uh, bank or banking. In Google, and what you see in the news are a number of negative, negative messages. Okay? Is there anything extremely negative about your main branch or about one of your branches going on right now? No. Okay? Turn this mood around and be a positive experience for your customers. Make them proud, invigorate the people in their branches. Do you see the lack of passion and enthusiasm in this branch? And it's BB&T, but they're not a, not a customer of mine now. They used to be when I was with, uh, with Axiom. Okay? They know their customers very well. They go and they score. Yes, there's some choice point connections and other things there, but they know their customers really, 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 really well. Okay? Well, they know them in the backside on the analytics side. Getting that information all the way down to you know, Joe, who's standing behind the, uh, the window there? Maybe, maybe not. But how do you get those people invigorated, plus the people that are waiting in line? Okay? We need to start leveraging helping those people that are in line. Give them something to do. You know, we're paying time for, uh, for radio space, we're paying time for ads. Don't just put a coffee machine in there, but make them a little positive or make them happy about what's going on. Be a community center, leverage the events that are taking place in your, uh, in your community, leverage the fact that you're local so that you can compete against an ally bank. They acknowledge that they don't want to be that full service, that's not their model. Okay, there's ways to be profitable in that model, but, and there's ways to uh, be extremely unprofitable as you heard in the first presentation. You need to know your numbers. But, the number one reason people pick their main bank, and on average people have do business with about seven banks, people that can even do more will have 11 or 12 or 13 banks. Okay? So trying to win all that business, probably never going to happen. That's 20 years going with working with uh, Chase and City and all these guys saying, we want to be the number one bank. Well, the number one bank is probably having three or four real services where people have interactions. Okay? Leverage your proximity in your local markets. That's your leverage point. And how you do that is, again, uh, get involved in com the community events, which you're probably already doing, but publicize it. Okay? Put it out there. Do press releases for everything, just so that they'll be searchable. I'm not saying, you know, everything needs to show up at, uh, in the uh, Star Ledger in a print, at, in a print uh, piece, but it'll show up in search. It'll show up on NJ.com. It'll show up in Google. And again, you heard about how expensive that is. Ally would die to have your searchability with a local search piece. When you talk about the local search terms, that's what it is. Okay? It's not just the message, it's the message and the location and the benefit that'll raise up your terms. Not hard to do. Hard to do at scale nationally, very hard to do. But locally, you have a tremendous, tremendous advantage because the location is designed around the way the customers are operating, which is emphasizing intimacy and proximity. Convenience is your biggest advantage. The fact that they see a face that they can associate with is a huge advantage. So leverage that. In the community, also be the broker of relationships. Everybody's talking about social right now. Banks have been social for a really, really long time, but we got too busy with cutbacks, we stopped being social. Okay? We need to be the broker, especially in the small business side, of relationship to relationship. Oh, I need printing done. Oh, by the way, I can connect you here. 
oh, I'm starting my business. Oh, by the way, here's an accountant, lawyer. Are you creating those connections? Think about the way your customers are going and getting professional help right now. Anybody have any idea? They're going to Google, they're hitting search, or they're asking a friend. Okay? It doesn't seem that complicated when I say it right now, but how do you enable the person in your branch, your relationship manager, to facilitate, to be the hub of those, putting together those relationships? If I create that as a target, it's really not that hard to do. That's what I try to do in the book, is say this, this is a whole set of interactions that could happen where customers have trusted in you, you could actually pay them back by helping them be part of a larger community. You plus your customer plus another customer or a prospect is a very, very difficult bond to break. Okay? That's the negative side. You're also setting up a great community and helping the small businesses and helping relationships grow. You're participating. And if you think about it, that's what, you know, that's what local banks, that's what they kind of expect from their, uh, for the rest of their service. You're under-leveraging the information that you have on the local community. So be social. Be personal. You know all this information about these people. You know what their roles are. You know what their needs are. If you have an MCIF and you've gone and uh, you looked at age, you look at segmentation, you look at is it a, is it a multi-generational um, household, all that kind of information tells you a lot about what their needs are. Okay? You can know their needs or anticipate their needs better than the customers can, so help them. You've got all that information with small business and with wealth management. I just did a project for a major consulting for firm on wealth management. Everybody's becoming an independent broker. I can flash back to the uh, Occupy Wall Street so slide and that everybody hates the big guys now because they lost all their money and the fees are too high and they're not managing their funds. I'd rather work with the guy who left Merrill Lynch who is down the street and has five people in his office that I can see eye to eye that maybe care about me a little bit. Okay? That's trust and confidence. Okay? They don't have the resources that those other big firms have, but we do believe that they're able to create those resources, that research capability, because they have access to information that they haven't had before. So the consulting firm, what we were talking about is how do we leverage that information you know, how do you not be the bottleneck but make all your customers smarter, help them make decisions? It's this big education role that you can have for your customers, which then will justify fees. They won't ask you about fees. They won't ask you about different services because you're becoming part of the fabric of their financial relationship, okay? How they manage their money. Now, the number one lead source for new business always is referrals, okay? Harder in uh, allies case because it's hard, you know, unless I'm forwarding an email to somebody, but I'm sure you create content to say, if you think we're so great, why don't you, send, why don't you tell a friend? You should be doing that in every interaction. Those people waiting in line at the, at the branch, okay, have them go and tell a friend. Create ways to go and do that. Create pa pa uh, patches or some kind of message that somebody can relay on Facebook. I had a great day today, da 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 Send it out in an email, say, why don't you tell your friends, click here. You can make that happen very easy, uh, easily technically. With flyers, at community events, all this different information, make it easy for people to talk about you. Prepare messages for the customers to deliver. It's actually a, a great way that uh, Barack Obama got elected was by creating messages on Facebook and uh, at that time on MySpace that people could go to a page, pull down pieces, build their own page, just with those pieces, no new content, and have their own page on MySpace on different applications. They gave them all the pieces, all the content, which is what you already have. Make it easy to assemble, make it easy to share. Be very obvious. We're not talking about, you know, very complex copy and complicated products. Just talk about the, you know, we're safe, we're sound, we're local, we'll be here for you. Here's a picture of the person that you'll be speaking to. Again, make it a uh, honest, sincere relationship and expand it. Generate messages about what's going on locally, what your role is. These seem like kind of uh, common sense things, but we're not going and we're not preparing the information for those messages. So th this is a clip of all the different signs. And by the way, when you let your customers or you let individuals go and create messages about anything, okay, they'll create messages about anything. You know, if you look at, uh, you know, if you want to leave your reputation and, your, uh, and those referrals to chance, anything can happen. So get involved. Help write all these messages for your customers, for your branches, for your relationship managers. Okay? Let them know that it's not that hard for them to go and write a good email. 
It's not that hard for them to be, go on Facebook if somebody made a mention of them. Somebody should be monitoring that anyway. Okay? All those things aren't hard, but with everything else I have to do, how can I make it uh, easy? Now, Ally Bank, if you go and you look at, uh, again, it's a, it's a good idea. I recommend everybody, if you haven't done it recently, go to Google, type in your company's name, and see what's out there about you. Okay? Look at news. This is going and looking at videos and looking at, uh, in this case, how many people have gone and uh, viewed videos. But there's content out there. I, a, a technology company I'm working for right now said, we don't have any videos. Okay? I said, well, I'm pretty sure you do. And they said, no, we have not made any videos. Okay? We have 103,000 friends on Facebook that we've gotten in four months. Zero promotion. Zero. Software is downloaded, it's free, it's downloaded 20 million times a month, globally. Okay? Customers love it because it works. It's been around for about five years. 200 million users. Okay? They're creating messages all the time. In the past couple of months, we just started to get in there because now we're starting to charge for a corporate product. We put the message out there. We know that the community's first reaction is going to be, this isn't free anymore. So we had to jump in real quickly and say, it's free for you, for these uses, but we want to make an even better product so big companies can pay for it and use it, and the product will keep getting better and better. Trust us. And you can look at the number of messages that spawned after that. There were actually about 50 messages. This happened yesterday morning around 11 o'clock. And by noon, there were about 50 messages for people jumping on the person that started to attack the charging the business. Say, they're a business too. They have great software. We should support them on and on and on. Leverage your community. There's people that are fanatics about you for no reason that you can possibly understand. So here's the work part for, for marketers and for agencies, okay? Is that every contact I have, web page, phone script, letter, envelope, sales script, blog, whatever, each of them have these little pieces of content in there, okay, that can be scripted and that should be scripted, okay? Then as I see you looking there, it's a lot of work to go and put a message in every one of these, okay? I was, uh, again, I, work, I worked in the marketing automation space. I used to be uh, Unica's biggest client, and I advised to them. They just got bought by IBM. The reason IBM bought them is because you can go and you can program all these messages in kind of one shot and see how they're performing so you're continuously testing. That sounds really hard to do, and it is on a national scale. But on a local scale, what I tried to point out in the book is you can, you can go and do this, and you can create a pretty simple map that a lot of this happens automatically. If I create a message in one place, I just want to make sure I've leveraged it everywhere else. Okay? but I want to make sure that I put these messages, but my messages, in places where people can get them and people can share them. Okay? You'll notice that some of those messages are managed by the bank. I need to think, though, that some of those are also managed by third parties. Okay? Vendors, uh, other uh, customers, uh, if I'm using third-party products, there's screens that are designed that have the information wrapped around them. Different types of business partners, if I'm going to Chamber of Commerce type events, all those different places, they also have all these different content places. And they're looking for content to fill those slots. So manage those slots and you'll be able to manage your message. Is everybody getting this? Does it make sense? Because now we're drilling down, I'm sorry, now we're getting to the work part. We'll, we'll get back to the Occupy uh, Wall Street piece. But the whole, the whole gist of this is your customers start, this is the CXC matrix that I created to kind of try to figure out how do customers go across or how do customers buy something or add a new product or if they have a problem, oh, I need a loan for my uh, kid going into college. It's great that he got in, but now I have to go get a loan. They got into too good a school. It's going to cost me $60,000 a year. You have to be kidding. So what do I do? I need to go and find a loan quickly. I'm aware of a need. I go and I gather information. I identify uh, who are the vendors, what are the types of products that are out there. I go and select based on my criteria. I start to negotiate for what I need, either online, with a person, by mail. The logistics, how am I going to get this? How is it going to be delivered? All those individual pieces, how is it going to get to me? The delivery, how do I receive the check? How do I, what format do I get the payments in? How does information go back and forth? Acceptance, I've taken it, I'm using it. Collection, how do I collect fees? What's in the billing statement? What's in any kind of back and forth transaction there? I'm using the product. Okay? Use is one of the most underused pieces of customer contact or one of the categories of underused contacts that you have. Okay? Ally Bank mentioned that they have their phone number at the bottom of every uh, page. Most of us don't want the phone number at the bottom of our page. Ally knows that because we don't want somebody at 630 calling the local branch. 
Okay? But that person wants to call the local branch. Okay? Customers are expecting those types of things. Their definition of service, thinking like a customer, has changed. They believe, if you have my money, I should be able to call you anytime. And they're going to keep thinking that more and more because Allianz is doing a lot of ads. Okay? TD Bank is open on Sundays for a reason. Okay? There's no competition on Sundays. There are certain locations, okay, nitpickers. But use. When somebody's using your product, have your brand evident, point out what the benefits are. Care and support. When somebody has a need or somebody has a problem, it's great that Ally said we don't try to get them off the phone right away. When I opened up a, uh, a remote banking group for Atlantic Bank of New York, I guess it was like 100 years ago, uh, I grabbed a bunch of our best branch people that were good customer-facing people that always turned something around. Actually, they were really chatty. And we got, them, we got them in, and they sold lights out. Because they took a problem and said, oh, wait, 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 and they would get, they'd listen to the problem and go, what you don't understand is, you know, we have a bunch of other products because it sounds like you have the wrong product. You know, people like you tend to like this one and this one, and this is why. Okay? People are so heavily engaged when they have a problem. They don't just want that solution. They want to know in the context, how do you help people like me is really what they're asking. They're asking to do more business with you. Otherwise, they would just try to close their account. Okay? Only 10% or less people actually call you and complain about something. Okay? That should scare you a little bit, too. They may go on Facebook and start trashing you before they ever call you. And then when somebody's closing an account, or somebody's closing a piece of business, or leaving or moving, what do you do? Another set of interactions that you can use. And then this community piece, you'll notice, wraps around. You know, this is the, uh, the internet, the web, and social. It's the local communities, whereas geography, digital, location, third party, one-to-one, -one is really where all those interactions take place. Okay? If I'm going to buy a product, it needs to be in my geography. I'm, I may be able to go and buy it digitally. I want to go to a specific location. Uh, I may go and buy it through a third party. That, that's really the nature of how that works. That's explained in the book. But the real beauti beautiful part of this is putting creativity in each one of those messages and telling your story. Now, again, when you get really uh, deep into this, there is a lot of work to be done. But you're already doing a lot of this work right now. It's just not being managed. But for every one of those interactions, Okay? For every one of those slots, every one of those contacts you have with the customer, I've recommended that there's nine objectives that you should have for every contact you have with the customer. So if it's by phone, if it's in a branch, if it's a, a person going out and having an in-person meeting, all those different things, identify who the customer is, first thing. Is it a repeat customer? Is it a first-time customer? Is it anonymous? That's, that should be the most obvious one. If you can bring together all the rest of the customer's information, then do that. Okay, connect their history and preferences, fulfill whatever they want in that, for that particular time, that need, what do they call me for, why are they on this web page. Okay, then you have the opportunity to go and upgrade them, explain to them, motivate them to grow their relationship. Uh, Cross-sell, okay, cross-sell doesn't mean they need to buy something, but if you can educate them about something, if you can get them to use another feature, you've created engagement, you've create, created another uh, value point there. Expand the relationship. Ask them if they know anybody else, it's kind of the referrals piece, too. Ask them if they know anybody else that has a similar type of need, similar type of problem. Okay? Educate them about what they're trying to do, about what's going to come next. And again, there's a lot of uh, individual interaction categories that happen within here. And the problem is, if you're at a larger organization, these all, ha all these different channels are managed by different departments. So what I had in the book, which I won't go over in the interest of time, is there's this customer view of how an offer happens, which is managed by multiple departments. So this isn't only under the purview of marketing. There's a, obviously a number of systems. The big difference here is this idea of having an objective for each one of those contact points, what the requirement is, how do I actually facilitate that, and then what's the value? What can I generate for going and changing my message? And that really changes the way that you do business. I've laid this out, and this seems really complicated, but this uh, it's really this customer lifecycle map, this CXC matrix. Once I've laid it out, I pretty much have a, a marketing communications plan across the customer lifecycle and across every channel. Okay? I designed it. it. It takes, for medium-sized companies, takes a week to go through the first part. Because you may say, you know what? We don't do anything in digital. We don't do anything in search. Okay? And those are categories that are under the digital side that we saw before. 
Well, that's fine, but now for the first time you've acknowledged that you don't spend any money there, that you're not managing messages there. Okay? It's kind of good news, bad news. Now you know, but should you? Should you be reallocating budget there? And where are your customers in those particular pieces? So again, tying back up those messages, and the idea here of, uh, this was an industry report. I figured I'd have to go and authenticate some of what I'm talking about. So this came at uh, 10 for 10, the big uh, growing commerce even this year is this integration of data, okay, which you heard in the first presentation, along with technology. So the analytics to tell you who to speak to, how to speak to different people, how did something work, how do you do testing, how do you automate the creation and uh, sending out of these messages so they're not so burdensome to get out there. And then customer expertise, which you have across the customer experience. How do I intersect all three of those so that they can run automatically? If I can't start to make this happen automatically, because I don't have that map, okay, I'm going to be reacting to the wrong things. I'm going to be over-investing in things that I've probably overdone, which have greatly diminishing returns in terms of their effectiveness. And that's really the message is the things that we got used to, the things that you know, I've, I've been doing in terms of copywriting and, and advertising and so forth at a, at a lot of different levels, don't have the effectiveness they used to have because somebody may get 20 or 30 messages via Facebook or via Google search or via all these other avenues before they would even get to my ad, before they get to my email or my message. So again, I'm not going to go into this. Uh, you know, I, uh, this is available to be sent out, but the idea of being able to be more lean and mean is really your advantage right now, especially for community banks. Media, media spend is shifting, but the idea is to be able to leverage each one of these interactions. You already are paying for the cost of every one of these interactions. Does everybody get that? You don't have an option typically not to answer their phone or not to speak to the person when they walk up to a teller window or when they go to the platform. They're already there. The person that is going to speak to them and greet them, you've already paid that cost. That's already an FTE. Okay? Give them something to talk about, but amplify, really grow the value of the return, the yield that you can get in that interaction. Look at all those interactions you have, and what I tell clients is, you don't have to do all of these perfectly right away, but if you go through and put the numbers of interactions that your customers are having with you across this grid, you'll see there's these huge pockets of interactions that you just do not manage right now. And that could be a tremendous opportunity. It's like a whole media channel that you're not leveraging that may have tremendous benefit for you right away. So again, grow passion. This only works if the people on the phone, if the people in the branch, if your product managers are excited about what they're doing and about your products. They have to believe that they're delivering a benefit to customers. Okay? I think that's marketing's role. I think you mentioned it was culture your third goal there, Catherine? Yeah, culture is a big deal. You know why? Because all the people that work in your organizations are also seeing TV, okay? And they're bankers right now. Okay? Do people hate me is what people that are working in banks think right now. Okay, we're charging more news about Bank of America. Do, does everybody hate me because are we going to charge a fee? I don't know. Tell your branches, tell everybody that you're not charging fees. You don't know that for how long. We've all been through that. But right now, you're probably not charging a $5 a month fee. Is that a new product? No. Should everybody know about it? Yes. Because there's a void with your customers. Your customers are hearing these messages. Do you have, uh, set, you know, do you have a 24, hour, uh, uh, 24 hours a day, seven day a week phone service? You better let your customers know because they're here in Ally and go, you know, I never called at 11 o'clock on, uh, on a Saturday, 11 o'clock at night, but someday I might. And that could be Ally's next commercial. And your customers will go, oh, you're right. I, I better make sure I go and I move that. Leverage location. Be local. Okay? That, that footprint is extremely valuable to customers. It's one of the biggest reasons why, why customers still choose a bank. And again, getting deposits and have somebody hand you money, you, a lot of people still need to look somebody in the eye. Be social, okay? Probably the, the big message here is leverage that network of relationships, not just that you have with your customers, but help your customers speak positively about you. How would they describe you? Okay, it's really simple. And don't think all marketing, oh, that we have the best rates. Oh, no. Well, I go in and Sally, you know, I meet Sally in the morning and she greets me and she asks me if I want a cup of coffee. She asks me how business is doing. Guess what? Put that message on YouTube, have Sally say something, okay? Send an email to everybody else saying, oh, do you just want to let you know, here's another customer that loves us. Dennis has a program like that, okay? But there's programs, that, 
people are putting up YouTube things without you. Okay? I just put up a registration program for a sports league that I manage for kids. Somebody went and did the, uh, a screen capture of the steps they went through and put it up on YouTube. Okay? How much would that cost your agency to do that? A lot. Could I get anybody in their right mind to go and do that for me if I asked them to? No. But out of that mass of people, somebody, somebody just did it. They said, I'm going through these steps. I know people aren't going to be able to figure this out. So they did it. Make it easy for people to do those types of things. And it's just a matter of preparing the message for each one of those slots, whether you're delivering it, a third party is delivering it, NJ.com is delivering it, or any of the other media, prepare the message so it's easy to get out there and can spread on its own. So I try to go through that really quickly. Does anybody have any uh, questions? I know it's late. There's going to be a test. Okay. Oh, sure. You briefly talked about social media and how important it is um, for client interaction. Can you just do you mind going a little bit more in detail to how important social media is to to build those relationships and? Sure. Social media uh, again, it, it's evolved at such a a high clip that your customers don't want you to be on Facebook on their Facebook and sending them messages directly but they do probably want to talk about something good or something bad or just about what happened in their day. So, so you, you don't necessarily need, you need to have a, a presence on Facebook. You need to have a page that looks reasonable. You don't need to necessarily just keep putting messages up there. You can put offers up there. You can say, you know what, coffee just went on. It sounds stupid. We just put a new pot of coffee on at this location. That sounds stupid, right? You wouldn't go, you wouldn't go to your agency and ask them to do that message. You can actually go and tweet that message. Guess what? Social media is built for those types of messages. Local people, you know, somebody who's three doors away, somebody who's driving by, that may be enough. Pop a message, they'll come in. And do you feel it's very important for a bank to get on social media? Uh, important enough that uh, I was looking at this actually for a, uh, a big financial institution, and they were completely freaked out by the regulatory issues. Okay? And you should be. Okay? Don't get financial advice. Don't, you know, there's a lot of things you can't do. So I went to American Express's uh, Facebook page, and I kept looking for their disclaimer. How long do you think that was? They don't have one. Their disclaimer, because it's supposed to be their customers talking, they put some messages out there. Their agency obviously manages a lot of it, but y you need to be involved and just look you know, presentable. You don't need to spend a lot of money on it, but customers expect you to be engaged in their interactions. You're, you, I think the, the banking relationship is so intimate, the customers kind of expect you to be there anyway, and you definitely should be there in search. It would make me nervous right now if I was going to, you know, if I was going to do a large relationship with a bank and I happened to type in their name to look up their phone number, but I just typed in their name, and those first five or six hits, whatever popped up, those should make you nervous if they're not the message that you want. Okay? You want something positive there, and that's what social is. Twitter messages could pop up there. Facebook messages could pop up there. A lot of that stuff is all searchable. So you need to, you need to be looking at that because your customers are. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this presentation from the New Jersey Bank Marketing Association. For more information, visit njbankmarketing.com. We produce these programs in the studios of Lubetkin Global Communications in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, on the web at lubetkin.net. For everyone at the New Jersey Bank Marketing Association, this is Steve Lubetkin. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you out there on the net. Take good care.